Hello everyone. So I am back with another really, really exciting video. I haven't filmed in a while just because we've been so busy here, but the news might be shocking to some of you guys or many of you guys may already know if you guys follow us on Instagram, but Katana is pregnant and she actually already gave birth. I wanted to film this video while she was still pregnant, but things just got so busy I was unable to film it. So she's actually already gave birth. She actually gave birth yesterday at the animal hospital and just wanted to, sorry, there's a car that's Okay. Just wanted to talk about her pregnancy, how that went, and what the process looked like for us because I know a lot of you guys had questions and I did keep it a secret from a lot of people for a very long time or just the internet in general, mainly because I didn't want to promise anyone anything and I wanted to make sure that she was healthy and 100% and we went through with the whole entire process without having to like stop midway through and then if something happened, then I would have to like let everyone know. So yes, just wanted to make sure everything was confirmed because I didn't want to promise anyone anything um, and also I don't feel the need to post every little thing on social media although I am very transparent and I do post a lot about our daily lives there are just some things that I feel like I don't feel the need that I have to post or anything like that but anyways without further ado she is pregnant and let's get on with the video so a little bit about the process and what we ended up doing and I guess a little backstory of like the whole breeding plan and everything. So pretty much I got Katana. I told a lot of people I got to Katana as a friend for Draco. As aside from companionship, we did get her as a prospect for breeding like for Draco. And the whole process was fairly straightforward. Um, we did get her from a specific kennel, PM me or message me or whatever. And I can let you guys know what kennel was, but we pretty much got her from a kennel out in Serbia. They were actually going to use her as a breeding female for their program however I have a friend that has like all these connections with um, international breeders especially with the whole European Doberman world so he is very very well versed um, since his family does own a kennel out there so he was my first person that I ended up asking if he knew of any older females that were available um, for new homes or if anyone was looking and so he actually just got lucky with katana because they were actually going to breed her and just by me knowing him they like felt more comfortable with giving her up to me um, but it wasn't like a forced thing or anything but they ended up rehoming her to me um, they didn't end up breeding her at all and i didn't even want to say that because she had to go through all the you know necessary health testing first before i can be like yeah we bought katana to breed which is not fair for her or you guys so that was kind of like the main reason no the main reason but one of the reasons why we didn't end up getting katana and especially we wanted an older dog at the time there was no way we could have dealt with another puppy and as for the whole health testing thing both draco and katana are fully health tested through the ofa if you guys don't know what that is it's the orthopedic foundation for animals they have very specific guidelines for certain breeds and what are required for each breed to get health tested for. So we did have to go to a lot of specialists and the whole process took a very, very long time. I mean, like I said, I didn't just get Katana right away and be like, let's breed the two. You know, it wasn't like that at all. Um, she did have to pass all of her health tests beforehand. And if she didn't pass any of them, then this would not have happened whatsoever. But yeah, let's get into more like health testing. So as for health testing, the OFA on the website actually recommends that Dobermans get tested for a plethora of things. I'll insert like a screenshot of the website. The most important thing in my opinion is the heart, of course. The cardiac function of a Doberman is very important because they are prone to DCM. If you guys don't know what DCM is, definitely look it up. It is a very common heart disease found in Dobermans, unfortunately. It is very important to get the parents both of their hearts tested for any signs of DCM and then as well as OFA for hips and elbows so we did all of that stuff so we had to go to multiple multiple specialists like you can't just walk into your normal general veterinary hospital and say like hey I want to do an OFA for hips and elbows or hey can you just check my dog's heart it doesn't work like that we had to go to veterinary specialists to get those done and those tests were very very expensive it wasn't just a couple hundred dollars it was actually in the thousands for both of them so it was a very long and extensive process not only that you have to submit the paperwork through or the veterinarians have to fill out the paperwork you have your own paperwork and then you have to send it to get submitted out through the OFA. So it was a very, very long process and it was not something that was done overnight. So the actual process of getting her 
inseminated, I guess. We met up with reproductive specialists. So like I said, we didn't go to just a normal general veterinarian hospital. We went to a specialist. So we ended up going to the reproduction specialists out here in Riverside. So we, it was kind of quite a far drive for us, but we took her there and the doctor did the whole exam, looked through all of her health tests. And once everything was decided, um, we ended up choosing the option for doing a TCI, which is when they put a camera in there with Draco's sperm and they inject it into her area. So <laughs> they also had to collect the sperm from Draco before they were able to do the TCI, obviously. And how they did that was, you know, they, yeah. And he, mm -hmm. and then they had to look at it under a microscope to make sure that all of his sperm was good to go. I'll insert a, photo of like his the chart and everything that they look at right here but from the looks of it the doctor said everything is normal for him and it was pretty much good to go after that I also didn't want them to do it the natural way just because I see a lot of potential dangers in that and that's why we were more open to spending you know that extra money to ensure that both of our dogs were safe during the process so after Draco and Katana you know, did it without actually doing it. We pretty much just changed her diet up a little bit and she's been on prenatal vitamins. She's been on puppy food as well. And I'm just feeding her, or I was just feeding her a little bit more as well as supplementing her meals with goat's milk, like as far as aftercare. We didn't do less exercise with her. We just did like less strenuous activities with her. Like I didn't like run her on go-karts while she was pregnant. That would be awful. <laughs> but we pretty much just did like light walks, a little bit of fetch in the backyard, but really not nothing crazy. And after 55 days, we ended up doing the ultrasound. The doctor saw one heartbeat, I think during the ultrasound or no, one or two heartbeats during the ultrasound. And I was like, huh, shouldn't they have like bigger litters than that? But the doctor did say it is random. And then on day, I believe 60, we ended up doing the x-ray and there was confirmed, I'll insert photos of the x-ray here. It was like very exciting to see. Um, there was a confirmed three puppies and it was, Honestly, I wanted to cry because I was so happy. I've been doing a lot of reading about information about like how to like whelp litters at home and I've been talking to the doctors. I had like a million questions. Even though I'm a vet tech, we don't deal with pregnant dogs every single day. And I'm really fortunate and blessed that I was able to reach out to a lot of Doberman breeders that had a lot of experience and a lot of them were so nice and they helped me out with any questions that I had and um, gave me amazing recommendations for literally anything that I needed. Um, everyone was super kind and like really respectful and I really appreciate that. So I definitely wanted to put that out there as well. And as you guys may know, I also breed exotic short hairs. So I knew that the process was going to be like totally different. I do have a mentor too, when it comes to breeding exotic short hairs, I didn't learn everything overnight. And yeah, so I knew puppy birth is definitely way different than kitten birth. So fast forward to yesterday, which was April 5th, Katana did end up having contractions at her last vet appointment. So the doctor noticed that she was having contractions. I was actually in class, so I was unable to be there, but my friend was there. He um, took her to her vet appointment, but then she ended up having contractions there and I had a midterm. So it was like this whole crazy morning for me. And yeah, she pretty much gave birth at the animal hospital, which was perfect, even though we prepared everything for her. So she ended up giving birth there and there was three healthy puppies as planned. There was no, like there's none hiding or anything in the x-ray. So she has been home now for over 24 hours. We do have her welding box set up and I know you guys are been waiting to see all of the puppies and what they look like. And I'm very, very excited to show you guys her area and like kind of like the welding box section that I put together for her. And then also all the supplies that I have for her. So yes, we will show you guys that now she is being such a good mama we have the whelping box set up with a heat lamp of course and they also get a heat mat and without further ado here are the little puppies they're all so cute and they're all doing great i'm weighing them every couple of hours just to make sure that they're all gaining healthy weight and they're all doing amazing this one here is the biggest one red i believe they are all females so unfortunately there are no little baby dracos but there's baby katanas <laughs> but they do have a vet check tomorrow to get their tails docked and katana's doing amazing at being a mom she's cleaning and licking them constantly making sure that they're clean we are going to start ens training tomorrow as well so if you guys don't know what that stands for that stands for early neurological stimulation and maybe i'll make a quick video tomorrow to show you guys what that is
at this stage, obviously they're blind and deaf, so they don't really know what's going on, but we're giving them the best care and attention since there's only three of them, so they're getting individualized attention. But Draco is not allowed near the whelping box, obviously. Katana won't allow him near here, and plus I don't want him near the puppies at all. So yeah, they're doing amazing other than that lovely whelping box from easy whelp there's just a bunch of wires but i'm gonna hide those later they pretty much just have a heat mat and they also have their heat lamp right here but i do put this heat the heat mat on like a lower setting so they don't overheat i also usually have a thermometer in here for them just to regulate their temperature the reason why there's pee pads right now is because i'm washing the actual mat but everything's easily cleanable for the most part she keeps everything very very clean and tidy for them there's also this bar that goes around the whole entire whelping box. So the puppies, if she rolls over, she doesn't roll over on the puppies and accidentally suffocates one of them. But since there's only three of them, she's keeping a very, very close eye on each and what, every one of them and making sure that they all get the attention that they need. These have been on this Nurture Me, which is a colostrum supplement. It pretty much supports their immune system and gives them, well, it says right here, like B vitamins, antibodies, and colostrum just to boost everything. A lot of breeders actually recommended me get this for them. So I got them a couple of these you're supposed to only give it the first 24 hours, so they already got their doses of this. Katana's been on some prenatal vitamins, and she is also, like I mentioned earlier, eating three times a day. Date on the puppies. <laughs> so cute. They got their tails docked yesterday at the vet. They're doing great. We're just keeping a close eye on her to make sure she doesn't lick too much um like she's doing right now we got a stand for the heat lamp so they can stay on one side if it's hot or if they're cold and then move to the other side to cool down a little bit and i usually just plug it in at night it's been so hot lately it has not been needed um we do keep the heat mat on though but so far so good oh and they're also going to be getting their probiotic gel for neonates and they just get a little bit at a time. So I, there's instructions on here. So I will be giving them this as needed. But thank you guys so much for watching. I'm so thankful and happy that everyone is so supportive and been so sweet and kind these past couple days um, with Katana being pregnant. I really, really appreciate it. All your guys' messages have been so sweet. And yeah, we will definitely be updating you on this journey. I know it's a very, very, like surprising one for a lot of you guys, but I'll definitely be updating the puppies as they grow older. And I also wanted to mention that we are at this time not taking any applications until the puppies have fully opened their eyes. And I feel like I'm comfortable with, you know, not sending them off, but I feel like I'm comfortable and they're healthy enough to potentially have a new home. But yes, just no DMs yet at the moment. I will be announcing when that time comes and when they will be available and we're gonna be having a very strict adoption process. So just cause you DM me first, that does not guarantee you anything or a puppy or anything. So there, I guess like the plan for this upcoming litter is that we're gonna be doing a strict adoption screening process and that includes an online application. If that all goes well, then we will be requiring a FaceTime application as well as a video of your home or like we can see your house through FaceTime or Zoom or however you guys want to do that. And we are not trying to ship any of our puppies internationally. We would prefer them to be closer to us, but if not, then it is what it is. But as I said earlier, thank you guys so much for watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe if you guys want to follow on the three little pups journey. And I will promise to be posting a lot more content. Just been so busy these past couple weeks. I kind of fell off and now I'm back. So now that everything's a little bit more settled down, I'll definitely be documenting the puppies as well. So I'm really excited to see their growth and to share that with you guys. So thank you guys so much for watching and I'll catch you guys on the next one. Bye.